Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play Sid Meier's Civilization VI. This time, for the first time, as Germany in a new series called Blitzkrieg, The Lightning War. In this case, the title of the series isn't intended to invoke the original coining of the term during World War II. We just happen to be playing as Germany with settings designed to make the game unfold in a really intense and rapid way. A lightning war, but across all eight ages. As I usually do, I'm going to be taking just a few minutes to introduce the game setup, and then we'll dive into some gameplay. If you'd rather just start watching the game now, there is a timestamp on your screen, but if you usually skip, I'd really encourage you to stick around for the setup portion this time. I'll try to be quick. This is going to be a different series in several key ways compared to my previous Civilization VI content. For starters, yes, we're playing as Germany. Some of you might be curious as to why Germany. After all, last time I did a series that wasn't based on a new DLC Civ, we did a vote. So why no vote? Well, one of my favorite aspects of creating Civilization VI content is getting to interact with people from around the world. I get to learn more about the culture and heritage of various countries and cities because the people of those countries and cities typically love to share when the spotlight is on them. And Germany, I think in particular, gets a lot of grief for the first half of the 20th century. But there's a lot more to Germany as a nation and as a culture, as a people, than that period alone. And the historical and cultural stuff is actually just the second biggest reason. The number one reason is that it so happens of the nations playable in Civilization VI that Germany, behind the United States and the United Kingdom, is my third largest stage as a content creator in terms of number of views over time. If you're curious, the top 10 goes United States, United Kingdom, Germany, Poland, Australia, Norway, France, Brazil, Italy. I'm counting Italy, even though they're not a playable civilization. Reasons should be obvious. <laughs> and Spain. Anyway, a few weeks ago, somebody told me that I should do a 1v1 series, and I immediately loved the idea. So when I was thinking about which civilization to play as, the thought of a lightning war series as Germany really jumped out at me. How lightning of a war, you might ask? Well, first of all, we're abandoning epic speed and standard speed for quick speed. We're going with four city-states, a tiny fractal map, which is a map size designed for four players, abundant resources, just to make sure that everyone has access to the things that they need amenity-wise, and you can focus on warfare, free-for-all victory conditions, with the exception of score victory. I typically don't play with turn limits, and the same is true here, and all of that, as you might have noticed, on immortal difficulty against a random opponent. This is my first Immortal series on the channel. In fact, I've only played Immortal once, and that was in a test game designed to see if this concept could work as a series. I might have gotten so into it that I played through the time that I'd uh, set aside to actually record episode one of this series and put it out on time the next day. And uh, the channel's noontime slot went quiet as a result. So there's that explanation. Immortal difficulty is the second highest difficulty in the game. It provides nearly 25% science, culture, and faith bonuses to the AI, as well as over 50% production and gold bonuses. It's just stupid. The AI get nearly a third more experience from combat, three free tech boosts and civic boosts, two settlers and four warriors to start the game, as well as two builders, just to make it extra fair. But anyway, that's my setup description. I'll talk a little bit about the mods I'm using once we get going. Uh, some of them will be obvious, but let's go ahead and see what Sean Bean has to say, and then we'll talk about Frederick Barbarossa of Germany. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest, from this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Heroic Frederick, King of the Germans, your task is to forge the independent states that surround you into an empire. You are blessed to be a great military leader. Use those skills to bring these cities under your sway, so that they may develop into commercial and industrial powerhouses. Surely then the bards will sing of mighty Frederick with the red beard, the great Holy Roman Emperor. So speaking of the Holy Roman Empire, one thing I want to note is that I typically when I play Civilization VI, I don't try to conquer all the city-states. I might conquer some. I don't think I actually ever have. Yes, I have. Yes, in some cases I have. 
on the channel, but I typically don't because I tend to prefer actually using the bonuses that are available to us. Particularly since we're playing on Immortal difficulty, I'm going to stick to that strategy. So I'm not necessarily go going to go for the Holy Roman Empire strategy of conquer all the things. I want to keep city-states that are more advantageous to me as allies, as with me as their suzerain overlord, perhaps, uh, rather than actually conquering them all, even though we do get that plus seven combat strength bonus. So when there is a city-state that we just need to kill, for whatever reason, we'll do it. Then we, of course, get the additional military policy slot. This is Frederick's ability, Ho Holy Roman Emperor. And then free imperial cities is Germany's ability. Each city can build one more district than usual. So basically your cities are more robust. You have one more district available to you than other players would have. We have two uniques. The U-boat is a pretty nice little submarine that is, I believe, um, is it uh, Atomic Era, possibly? I, th I think it's Atomic Era submarine. And the U-boat actually has two key abilities. Number one, it does more damage in deep water. But more importantly, it actually, that's number two. Number one <laughs> is that it actually can detect enemy submarines from further away than just one tile. So the U-boat is great to have numerous instances of just numerous U-boats out in the water to help you know, kind of keep your area secure if we happen to have a naval frontier. We might not. It's a fractal map, so who knows how it's going to unfold. And then finally, there's the Hansa Unique District, which gets adjacency bonuses based on whether it's next to a commercial hub, but also whether it's next to certain resources or just certain other districts. So that's pretty handy. Let's go ahead and kick the game off and see how we started. Okay, so we are, ah, that's actually, we're surrounded by resources, literally, on all sides. That's almost... <laughs> okay, that's never happened, uh, but we did select abundant resources, so that's understandable. So we're going to go ahead and just plop Aachen down right there. We have stone on three different sides of us, which is fantastic. Uh, we're probably going to build Stonehenge there, and because we have stone on all sides, we're going to go for Stonehenge first. Let's go for a scout, um, and then research-wise, like I said, we're going to go for astrology, bum rush this, which will give us access to the... Holy Site District and the accompanying shrine building, but also the ability to build Stonehenge and get our religion first. But ideally, we're going to find a natural wonder uh, to help along with to help us along with that process. So let's go ahead and start exploring. Oh, we've already found the coast. We are somewhat near the water. This could be a lake, but that looks like it'd be a pretty damn big lake if it is one. So yeah, I'm going to turn to. No, definitely not a lake. That is the ocean. Are we near the edge of the world? I don't see... Oh, th yeah. So there's the northern edge of the world right there. The very top of the map. I'm going to try and move through these somewhat quickly, just given the fact that... It's the beginning of the game, but also because uh, one of the nice things about playing on this game speed and this particular size of map is the load times are just going to be better. It's going to be really easy to play on a more rapid clip. So let's build the monument next. All right, we've met Jerusalem, and we're the first to meet them. So we get an envoy with them, which is great. We're going to start getting faith right away. Jerusalem's suzerain bonus is this automatically converts to the religion you founded and exerts, it exerts pressure for that religion as if it were a holy city. Oh, wow. Good to know. Looks like the Barbarian Scouts have arrived. We're actually kind of scouting in the same direction. So I want to make sure I go up this direction with my warrior and this way up here. I'm not going to take my warrior too far away from home. I'm just trying to keep the scout contained. If we can finish off this scout before he gets any funny ideas, then I think we can safely explore. So the first scout to find us has been dealt with. Meanwhile, let's move up further north. Again, I'm not going to take you too far away from home, this warrior in particular, because we need them to defend in case other barbarians or our actual opponent decides to come knocking on our door. We did find a goodie hut, though, so we'll go at least that far north. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and heal the scout up for a bit. We are playing with more Barbarian XP enabled as a mod, which is a pretty handy little thing, um, considering the fact that in Civ Six. Barbarians are so scary at the beginning of the game, and you have to fight them so much, particularly if you let a lot of scouts get back to their encampments, but you don't get a lot of experience from them. That uh, amount, the amount of experience that you can get 
gets capped pretty early. Um, it's it's pretty off-putting, to tell you the truth. Um, so I use the More Barbarian XP mod in most of my Civilization Six play on and off YouTube. Okay, Pantheon-wise, let's see. What do we have near us again? We have some... We definitely have some cattle near us. We have some uh, some tea. So this will, these will be tea plantations. Three tea plantations, in fact. And then, of course, all this stone. Four stone. So is there a bonus even related to quarries? I don't think there is. There should be another option down here. So that means uh, our opponent has already found has already founded their pantheon. Good to know. All right, so let's go ahead and go for Divine Spark. I usually go for this one when, I, when I've got a feeling about a game. And th we're playing on a mortal difficulty, so I've definitely got a feeling. Let's see, plus one great person point from Holy Site, Campus, and Theater Square Districts. Again, that makes great profits, great scientists, and great writers easier to obtain. Let's found that pantheon. Your progress towards mysticism has advanced considerably. Wonderful. Wunderbar, he exclaimed with great relish. So, uh, I kind of want to go for a settler, to tell you the truth. We don't have any tiles immediately around us that we can improve, because they're all special resource tiles, so the builder is not as important. Then again, in six turns, unless we find a natural wonder... Hang on. I'm a little frustrated we haven't found one yet. Part of the reason is that I haven't been able to scout with my uh, with that guy. We did fend off those barbarians, which is nice, but I really would like to find a natural wonder. We're officially At past the point. Man is the no. Okay, we're officially past the point where the boost would be ideal to us, which sucks when that happens, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and go to our government. Because we are Germany, we have both military slots available to us, so we can give ourselves the combat strength bonus as well as the double experience for recon units bonus. Now, we're already getting a faith bonus from having met Jerusalem, so I kind of want to go for urban planning immediately as a way to get some additional experience. And we are now producing this settler. It's going to be done in seven turns. Let's also work towards foreign trade. What continent are we on, by the way? We're playing also with the more lenses mod. The continent we started on is Avalonia. And we have all these lenses available to us. We're also playing with the better trade screen mod, which, of course, we can't see just yet because we don't have traders yet. Yeah, it looks like we're not going to get the benefit of finding a natural wonder. But we did get the benefit of, of fighting off those barbarians early on, so that's not the worst thing. It also looks like we might have a mountain range protecting us a little bit, so we might have a pretty decent little start location here. We'll see how this goes. Okay, barbarians, of course. No, I didn't mean to click Jerusalem. I was just dragging. Just drag selecting, which is a thing in Civ 6. Talked about it a lot in recent recordings of mine. Oh, so you're going to specifically loop around and attack my scout because you're a jerk. I don't okay. believe in astrology. I'm a Sagittarius, <laughs> and we're skeptical. Okay, so now I have access to building Stonehenge. I'm going to wait till that settler finishes first. Um... I can hit them right now if I wanted to, but I'm actually going to get away. Oh, we met Carthage, and we were the first to meet them. Interesting. So this is a military city-state. Their suzerain bonus is that our encampment districts provide plus one trade route capacity each. That's not bad. Um, so since we met them, so it looks like Carthage wants us to destroy a barbarian outpost. So that, that way we know. We know there's a barbarian outpost somewhere here. And then Jerusalem wants us to recruit a great merchant. That's not going to happen for a while. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Right. I, I think I should probably go for No, you know what? Let's let's go for um animal husbandry first because pastures do not have a uh, they provide housing first of all and they don't have a um appeal uh penalty to the tile. So we're going to start with that. Not that it really matters at this point in the game, but just as far as like the best choice to start with. I think that's the one to go with. Now, are you going to attack me again? Of course you are. You're such a jerk. All right, so thankfully those warriors are coming in to help. Let's go ahead and promote the scout. Let's give them faster movement through woods and rainforest. That'll allow them to get away in the next turn. And let's go ahead and bring the warrior back. We didn't find a natural wonder, so now we just need to get the warrior back to defend Aachen in case any shenanigans happen. Of course you're going to attack me again. By all means, just keep plinking away with your arrows. Meanwhile, I'm going to run the hell away. Where is our opponent? Settlers ready. We've got a pretty nice city location 
That actually is a pretty good spot. Let's scout a little bit farther. I would agree that that is a good spot to put a city. Let's go ahead and do it. Because it's pretty safe at the moment. Okay, now we need to build Stonehenge. That requires purchasing a tile. I think that was the spot we talked about, right? Um, we could also do one there. That's going to grow in five turns, and that would be a perfect spot. But we need to build it now. So there's this is Flatlands. Yep, let's do it. Choose production. Stonehenge, done in 19 turns. Fine. 17 turns if I put you on production focus. So production focus it is. I'm surprised we have not met our opponent yet. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm hoping no barbarians come through this particular area in the next few seconds. All right, so being near this coffee is going to be good. I think I probably want to put... We're going to have the city right there. Done. The city of Cologne has been founded. Now, what should we build first? We can go ahead and build a holy site. There's a couple of good locations for a holy site as well. There's a, a lot of good farming tiles. That's a production tile. I'd rather leave the production tile alone. That's also a production tile, though. Uh, yeah, let's go for the lesser of the two. Holy site's going to be built there. 11 turns away. we got some horses nearby, too. Uh, in workable range. So that's not bad. Three tiles away is workable range. Four tiles is not. If there are no dogs in heaven, then when I die, I want to go where they went. All right, now the question is, how much is a builder? 130? Ooh, in a couple of turns, we can just buy a builder outright while Stonehenge is building, improve some of these... And Stonehenge will finish much faster. I actually think we have a shot at Stonehenge, guys. Not bad. One thing that I found in my test play of Immortal is that I was still able to pursue my Wonderholic uh, Civilization VI persona. I was, I was able to build a bunch of wonders. I was even playing against China and built most of the wonders in the game. So maybe that was luck, but... Um, oh, actually, wait. We don't have access to the mines yet, but we do have access to animal husbandry. Tell you what, let's go ahead and go... Mm, no, let's go for mining, because I want to get access to pyramids sooner than later. Pottery's nice, as is writing in the library and science and everything. Well, see, yeah, that's... No, I've just changed my mind, because it's this. This is really the... This is the, the one that I want to go for next. If we can get access to the campus and go ahead and build a few campus districts, or at least one campus district, then we can go for mining and start working towards, like, masonry or the wheel. Every technology is important, <laughs> is the takeaway right now. Every technology matters. It's just a matter of which one you go for first. All right. I don't know where our opponent is. I'm kind of loving the fact that we haven't met them yet, but it's also making me kind of nervous. Where That's are you and what are you doing? That's the positive aspect of trade, I suppose. The world gets stirred up together. Okay, now I think we can go ahead and buy that builder. Perfect. We can also buy a trader, but I'd rather have the builder first. All right, we're going to improve that in a second, and that'll help Stonehenge build even faster. Aachen is also about to produce another citizen, which will also help Stonehenge build faster. So we're off to a good start. Let's go for craftsmanship here. So we are producing, so we're progressing rather, down the uh, civics tree evenly on top and bottom. Let's heal the scout up, because I'd prefer not to lose the scout. And let's bring this warrior back to Aachen to defend, because we have a good start, and I'd hate to lose it over shenanigans. Your knowledge of horseback riding, riding has advanced advanced considerably. I promise I can speak the English language. Let's all right, go over there next. Yep, almost back. Where the hell is our opponent? Seriously, our progress towards early empire has advanced considerably because we um, we just have a growing number of citizens. We have a populous early empire. It's 3100 BC, already on turn 31. Again, we're going to be moving... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Let's not... If you're ready to move, then move. Let's come in this direction and see what's south of these mountains. Another scout wouldn't be a bad idea. I'd rather have my warrior close to home to defend. All right, and, and your benefit is woods and rainforest movement. Six turns away from Stonehenge. I think we're going to get it. It's nice. Our progress towards political philosophy has advanced considerably. An unmet player has been defeated, so that means a city-state has just fallen. So, 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why would we get the political philosophy boost? Which is what we just got. We didn't... So evidently, does that mean... Maybe two of the other city-states have already been defeated? We've only met two, and one of them was just defeated. So we know someone's conquering city-states. Which means it's an AI that has a vested interest in conquering city-states, most likely. What's the deal? Alright, we have one more build with this guy, and I kind of... We don't have the ability to build mines yet. I suppose I should just build a farm. We've got access... Well, actually, that's a hill tile, so we can't build a farm there. There's a specific research progress that gives us access to that nice goody hut. Where the No hell? man ever wetted clay and then left it. Right. As if there would be bricks by chance and fortune. So it looks like they went for the hanging gardens first, which is fine by me, because Stonehenge is the one that I want. I want to get access to religion as soon as possible so we can get some of the best benefits. So that's good that they went for that one first. Let's go for writing next. We haven't met the other civilization, so we don't have the boost, but we need to go for that nonetheless. Progress towards craftsmanship has advanced considerably. That's perfect, considering that's the one we're working towards at the moment. Got some bananas down here, some additional coffee, and some wheat. Good city location Without down here. Without craftsmanship, inspiration is a mere reed shaken in the wind. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like our current uh, policies. We're going to stick with these. Maybe a goge instead? No, let's stick with what we got, because we're still doing some a, a decent amount of exploring. And over here, how much does a scout cost? 80 gold? Okay, it's going to be a second before we can buy another scout, but I think I do want another scout. We need to work towards political philosophy in our first governments, so let's go for early empire, since we already have the boost toward it. And this will give us another couple of um, good policies, as well as the ability to enforce open borders, etc. And then state workforce, which is always handy to have. Progress towards state workforce has advanced considerably. All right. Wait, did, no, 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 not state workforce. What was I looking at? Okay, I just misread that. I was saying state workforce, but in fact, these are the two policies. We get colonization and land surveyors going with early empire. I don't know why I said and then state workforce, but that's the other policy, but we just got to boost towards it as well. The other civic, rather. So let's... In Cologne, we now have access to... Yeah, we... Well, we're going to get a great profit, so I don't really need to necessarily build shrines at an insane rate. Let's go ahead and build our first trader so we can have that going. And yeah, we can't do anything on this tile. We officially cannot. However, we can do something on that tile, and that's worth doing. Have not met our opponent yet. It's possible they might be on a separate landmass. Because this is a fractal map. Can you imagine trying to throw 600 people into helping you drag a 50-ton stone 18 miles across the countryside and muscle it into an upright position, and then saying, Right, lads, another 20 like that. Then we can party. Okay. Your progress towards drama and poetry has advanced considerably because we finished a wonder, and now we have access to this guy. Let's actually move you over to Aachen, and the next turn we're going to found our religion. Beautiful. I doubt that our opponent has gotten a religion yet, so that's a good win. Now, a holy site here would be handy too. There is, if we had 60 gold, there'd be, a, let's, let's wait to build that. Let's just build the granary first. We already have an amenity problem in Aachen, unfortunately. Ah, some gypsum down here. Yeah, I'm really, I'm thinking they're either on a very different part of the continent, far away from us, or I, I just don't know where they are. Found religion. Excellent. Let's, I think we're going to go with Catholicism, right? That would be the sensible choice. the most accurate. There's not, um, there's not an option. Yeah. Let's go with Catholicism. This list already looks a little shorter than it should, or am I just, am I imagining it? Jesuit education is probably what I want to go with. Campus and theater square districts with faith. Okay. 
Okay, and then we need one more belief type. That's our primary belief type. Is Defender of the Faith still available? Yes, it is. There we go. Defender of the Faith. Combat units gain plus 10 combat strength when within, when within the borders of friendly cities that follow this religion. Found this religion. That's going to make it really easy to defend against this immortal level AI when we finally meet them. But so far, they are hiding from us. Which is interesting. Because this is substantially longer than in my test game as far as like how long it took on this size map to meet. I mean, we are playing on a tiny map, right? Yeah, we are. It's clearly a tiny map. There's the top edge and there's the bottom edge. We've already explored top to bottom. Weird. Okay, so Cologne also needs some of its first buildings. I think probably the monument would be a good idea to build next. The shrine would be good too, but the monument first. Let's go for that, and then definitely just trade with Aachen to get our first... Good. Got our currency boost. And that's also going to help that city grow. Now, right now, we've got Aachen on... Interesting. Yeah, let's, let's keep you on that setting then. Oh, nice. Another goodie hut. Good to know. Is that still the Hanging Gardens notification, or did they build another wonder? Okay. Fine by me. I'm just wondering what the heck is going on with the other city-state. That really threw me off. Okay, so I think another settler would probably be a good idea. Let's go ahead and keep catching up, because we, we don't have a lot of pressure right now from barbarians or the other player. I'm not sure. This is a little bit of a godsend, so I'm going to found my third city while I have the chance. Your knowledge of bronze working has advanced considerably. Scout leveled up, actually, so we need to promote him. Writing him is easy. Nice. Oh, yeah. It was luxuries like air conditioning that brought down the Roman Empire. 50% production towards settlers? Actually, yeah, let's do that. If we're going to be cranking out additional settlers pretty rapidly. Let's do it. This scout needs to be... I guess I'll give him the Alpine promotion as well. So he now can move over any type of terrain faster. Let's go and go for mining so that we can improve those tiles around Aachen. And let's work for... Let's go for... Oh, that's why I mentioned state workforce earlier, because we need to go for that before political philosophy. And that's why I mentioned it that way. <laughs> uh, tying myself up in knots. Let's see. Nothing in that direction. I'm really, I mean, we've got a lot of territory right now that seems to be ours for the taking. Which is wonderful. I just really want to know where the other player is. They're probably on a separate landmass. Who deserves more credit than the wife of a coal miner? Merle Travis. Don't know who that is. So... That could be a good spot. That could be a good spot. Get some copper, some spices. Do we have spices near us? You have spices up there, actually, but that's not... That's four tiles away, so that's not workable by Aachen, so... We have some gypsum down here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead... Is that a tundra tile? No, it's... It's, it's plains. Oh, it's just because it's... The color of the, the map. Alright, so let's go here. First and foremost. And then, hmm, decisions. Maybe we aren't near any desert, though, are we? I haven't seen any desert, so actually there's desert up here. If we, if we manage to put another city up here quickly-ish, we could potentially get pyramids or more. <laughs> pyramids and Petra. <laughs> um, no, we don't have any cities that are really in good position to get Petra before the AI does, but... I still kind of want to go for masonry first so we get access to walls. And also allows the harvesting of stone. Not that we're going to do that, but we have that ability. Okay, there's a good campus spot right there. We have the money for it, so let's go ahead and plop that down. Start building up that. Also, can we do another good campus? Yes, we can. Well, actually, no, we can't. Because we don't quite have 40 gold to buy either of the slots that are available for it. So why don't we go ahead and... We need another settler, probably. You know, let's go ahead and just do another settler. 
take advantage of this lull. Not sure why barbarians are so infrequent at the moment. Hey, there's a barbarian. Okay, so there's probably an encampment somewhere down here. I might use the scout to actually meet the settler. Begins with a strong, well-educated workforce. Okay, we can go for conscription. If we reduce the double experience for re yeah, let's go ahead and replace that with conscription. And that's going to give us slightly more gold per turn. And now we're going to go for political philosophy and have access to that for the first time. All right, good. We've got eyes on all of the terrain in between us and that settler, so it's just a matter of waiting till he arrives. I do not know what's happening. This is, this is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. We get a nice, straightforward start. A little bit more so than the typical <laughs> game on Immortal difficulty. Again, not that I've played it that much. This is, but I feel like this is atypical. All right. Heidelberg has been founded. Now, do we have that gold yet? No, we don't. Actually, they're less expensive now as tiles. So let's go ahead and go for this one. Let's put the campus there. So it's actually, we're going to have two campuses very near one another. And then Heidelberg, you need probably a granary before you need anything else. So let's work on that. This settler, yeah, come on over here. And while the settler's on the way, we'll use the scout to kind of look at the area a little bit more closely and make sure it's not a bad idea for any reason. No, it's just on a little bit of a peninsula. Or we could put it there. The coastal city would give us an edge sailing-wise, though. Yeah, let's do a coastal city right there on top of those woods. And then... Aachen, you could use... Oh, yeah, that's right. We have Jesuit education, so we can go ahead and just purchase a library outright with faith. Help give us an early technological edge. Assuming, anyway, that we will. Like, we haven't met the opponent. They could already be in the information age. Who knows? <laughs> just kidding. They're not, they're not going to be that far, of course. Um, let's go... For, yeah, let's go for a builder. Yeah, I feel like the AI is on a different landmass. Either that or they're just on the opposite end of the frickin' world. So what that means is we're going to have to really do what we can to build up an empire rapidly. Especially since we haven't had too much trouble with barbarians just yet. I would say probably Granary first here as well. Let's go ahead and get that city growing rapidly. We're not done. We need to keep building settlers expand our number of cities, start catching up. We are in the classical era at 2230 when BC. When wasteful war shall statues overturn, and broils root out the work of masonry. Divide and rule oh, nice. sound mark. So now we have access to our first government type. That was fast. Let's see. Now, sin again, since we are Germany, we have an extra military policy slot. So normally you might go for autocracy thinking, you know, we get that plus one boost to all yields, the bonus on wonder production, and the extra military slot, but we still get the extra military slot if we go with oligarchy, plus we get access to our first diplomatic slots and a wildcard slot and a combat strength bonus for all of our units. But then again, we're not really fighting with anyone right now, so maybe... Actually, you know, I'm thinking Classical Republic might be the best way to go. The only downside to Classical Republic is that we actually lose a military slot. We still get the wild card slot. And so that could help us. Yeah, let's let's go for Classical Republic because the wild card slot will allow us to keep the military policies we have, but then help us catch up, help us establish a really strong economy. So let's go ahead and go for Charismatic Leader so we get extra influence points per turn towards improving our relationship with these city-states near us. And then, yeah, we're not really fighting barbarians. So... A goge, I suppose? I mean, I really don't need any of these right now, given that we're not fighting against anyone. So I just want to have maybe just a bunch of economic policies would be the best way to go. Production towards ancient and classical wonders? Sure. Let's actually use that as our wild card. 
and then plus two gold from all trade routes is probably the next best one. Either that or plus one production in all cities. Let's do plus one production in all cities. 50% production towards settlers. Um, yeah, let's actually take that away, and we're going to put plus two gold from all trade routes in. Because the, the plus one production in all cities will help us with our settlers regardless. So we don't need to necessarily worry about having an extra bonus on top of the plus one we're already getting towards everything. All right, someone's already built hanging gardens. Let's go ahead and do, let's research the wheel so we get access to the water mill because all of our cities right now, I think, yes, every single one of our cities is on a river. And then let's go for, let's see, military tradition would give flanking and support combat bonuses. Researching mysticism would give us access to another wonder, and we would get an additional envoy. And of course, drama and poetry gives us access to the amphitheater. Games and recreation gives us access to the Colosseum. So many decisions. Tell you what, let's go ahead and try and go for the Colosseum. We don't have any entertainment districts yet, so it's going to be a while before we can build it. But just to go ahead and have that going would probably be a good thing. Apadana. Extra envoys when you build a wonder, including Apadana in this city. Yep, <laughs> that's happening. Oh, we have to build it on top of one of our stone? Well, that's some crap. Where does it have to be built? It must be adjacent to your capital. Yeah, we have to build it on one of these spots. Well, that sucks. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay at the end of the day. Yep, all right, let's just put it down there. It's gonna be 21 turns. If I put you, you already are on production focus, so without that, it's 23. And this builder now can improve that stone. Let's see if that helped it at all. Yep, it did. 19 turns. Not bad. Finally found some barbarians. So that's where that boat came from earlier. Why haven't you sent a scout out? I'm really curious as to what's going on with you. But I'm going to stay away from you. So that you don't get uh, curious. <laughs> Seventeen turns away from Apadana. We have envoys now. Let's see. Do I want to work towards Carthage? No, I'd rather work towards Jerusalem, because we get the ability again to purchase holy site and um, no, no, not holy site, but uh, campus and theater square buildings based on the amount of faith we generate. All right. So once again, yeah, we just I think we reduced our production time again, didn't we? There wasn't it seventeen a second ago, and then we improved that, and it was sixteen. I think we did. And then there's still one more stone up there I can improve, so we're going to do that too. So probably keep this... No, tell you what, let's go ahead and move the trader over to Magdeburg. There looks like there might be a bit of a land bridge here to another section of the world. Nope, just a peninsula. So there might be something going on up here, but this would explain why we haven't met the other player yet. We are in a segmented part of the map, so we need to keep exploring as much as possible. Now, where are we? This is Heidelberg. Probably either a... Let's see. Is there a good... Ooh, there's a very good campus spot. We don't have the money for it, but that's good to know. Holy site. There's one, but we'd have to replace the... Um, we'd have to replace the grain. Okay, well... Let's go ahead and work on the monument there, and I'm going to go through the rest of this turn. We're at turn 263 at... Or, turn 63 <laughs> at the moment. Cologne, plus two, plus one, plus two... Neither of the city-states want a trade route right now. Yeah, just go ahead and let's establish a, a trading post with the capital. Aachen is two turns away from a new citizen. But I am going to go ahead and cut this first episode here. In the next one, we are going to continue to crank out settlers. I'm going to try and put a city up here as soon as possible so that we can not only kind of have a northern border against whatever might come down over this land bridge here, because I feel like that's where we might first encounter our opponent, whoever our opponent is. This is really unusual to be 2,000 years and 63 turns into the game, roughly 2,000 years and 63 turns in the game, and not know who our opponent is yet. But um, not the worst thing in terms of starts, because it has given us the ability to establish these cities early on. Um, we'll have to see how it goes from here. I just don't, I have no bearing on how the opponent is doing, so I'm just moving as rapidly as I can in the meantime, and we're going to keep that going with episode two.
Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes in Blitzkrieg are going to be coming out every day at noon Eastern time, which is when I put out all of my historical and grand strategy content on the channel. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.